Hello boys and girls, moms and dads, and welcome to St. Barnabas Children's Church. Today I want to start out uh, with a song. It is a camp song. It was written by Randy Rothwell. I'm not sure exactly the year. It's an old camp song called, Lord You Are More Precious Than Silver. Um, the words go, Lord You Are More Precious Than Silver. Lord You Are More Costly Than Gold. Lord, you are more beautiful than diamonds, and nothing I desire compares to you. Let's sing it. Lord, you are more precious than silver. Lord, you are more costly than gold. Lord, Sing one more time. Lord, you are more precious than silver. Lord, you are more costly than gold. Lord, you are. Lord, you are more beautiful than diamonds. And nothing I desire. part of the song is where the Lord says, child, you are. And the Lord says, child, you are more precious than silver. Child, you are more costly than gold. Friends, this is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. That song, Lord, You Are More Precious Than Silver, um, is us giving our praises to God. But also as important, and maybe even more important, is God saying to us, child, you are more precious than silver. That is going to be our theme today. Um, we have Psalm 23 as our verse today. It was our psalm in the longer worship service, and it's our psalm here, and it's the, the, the verse that I preached on in the longer service. So I want to just take this time, and I'm going to read from Psalm 23. It's um, in the Bible, near the middle of your Bible. So if you let your Bible sort of fall open in the middle, you get close to the Psalms. Psalm 23. This is out of the, the version called The Message, which I really love different translations of the Bible. This one is very modern, and it writes the, the biblical passages in almost a poetry way. So this is Psalm 23 in the translation of The Message. God, my shepherd, I don't need a thing. You have bedded me down in lush meadows, you find me quiet pools to drink from. True to your word, you let me catch my breath and send me in the right direction. Even when the way goes through Death Valley, I'm not afraid when you walk at my side. Your trusty shepherd's crook makes me feel secure. You serve me a six-course dinner right in front of my enemies. You revive my drooping head. My cup brims with blessings. Your beauty and love chase after me every day of my life. I'm back home in the house of God for the rest of my life. A little different version than maybe what you've heard in Sunday school in Lighthouse. Um, I wanted to read that today because I think it's a great imagery of how much God loves us. It's the imagery of a shepherd and the sheep. I grew up on a farm many years ago in Iowa my mom and dad were dairy farmers, and we had a big dairy herd of dairy cows that we milked twice a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year. 
We babied the cows because the cows provided everything for us. Now, I don't have a herd of cows anymore, but I do have a special person, well, I call him a person in my life that is very important to me. I'm gonna introduce you to this little guy. This is Oliver. And Oliver, I don't live on a farm anymore, but Oliver is a member of my family, and he is the guy that we take care of in our, in our house, and we love him just as if he's a most important part of our family. Now, there are things we do to take care of Oliver, and he gets all sorts of things. In fact, he just got a bath today. He smells awesome. We do things like this. We have to clip his nails, and during COVID-19, we clipped his nails a lot. We do things where we have, we brush him out. He likes to be brushed and it's get all that stuff, all those snarls out of his coat. Oliver is a dog, oh, there goes his tail. Oliver is a dog that loves to snuggle and loves to be with people. In fact, he loves to sleep with us at night. So sometimes he goes around to different people's beds. Oliver feels very safe in our family because we provide everything he needs. He gets a lot of love. He gets a lot of care. We have to make sure that he's protected. If we leave a door open to the house, he could run away and get hurt in the street. So we make sure that he's well protected and taken care of. And we do things like buy him good food that's healthy for him. We make sure he has fresh water, keep his bowl clean. We do things like, um, well, we give him a haircut. We used to take him to a place during uh, before COVID-19, but we learned how to cut his hair with the clippers, and we've been doing that ourselves. And it gives us a chance to really look over him to make sure there's no bumps or bruises or cuts, and he gets all kinds of good care that way. Oliver is just the most precious uh, little guy in our family. Everybody loves him. We take him for walks and make sure he gets good exercise. He is seven years old. He doesn't look seven, does he? He looks like he's a puppy and he kind of acts like a puppy and he gets carried around and loved and kissed and snuggled and he is just very, very sweet. And that is to me, I think, what Psalm 23 was trying to teach us. You see, David, who was King David when he wrote that psalm, started out as a young boy doing the job of a shepherd, taking care of the sheep, and he loved his sheep. He was about your age, I would imagine, when he was a shepherd, for you boys and girls who are maybe in like fifth grade or sixth grade or maybe even fourth grade. I'm sure he was working early in life and he was taking care of the lambs in the field and he was taking care of the sheep and everything they needed, he provided and he protected them and made sure that they were cared for and he loved them. And I could just see little David, the shepherd boy, you know, taking care and, you know, taking those little baby lambs into his arm and just loving them. David was really good with a slingshot. Do you remember a story where David used a slingshot to take down Goliath, the giant. Well, he got good at slingshots because he was a shepherd who had to use slingshots to keep away the wolves and those things that wanted to get those dear little sheep. So King David, when he grew older, he remembered what it was like to be a shepherd, loving those sheep and taking care of them. And he said, you know what? God loves us that way. God would, God would protect us. God will protect us. God will lay down God's life for us. Hmm, that's what Jesus did. Just like I love Oliver here, I can understand how God loves us. My heart is really full and big. I want you to take a minute and just stop the video and just talk to your mom and dad about how, if you have a pet in your house, how you like to take care of your pet and what your pet means to you. If you have a cat or a dog or a fish or a turtle or whatever it is you have, maybe take time just to stop and just talk about that special someone in your life. Take a few minutes. And now I want you to think about how 
other people in your life take care of you, boys and girls. I want you to think about how you have people in your life who watch out for you. Your parents, grandparents maybe, aunts and uncles, maybe a next door neighbor who watches out for you or a cool babysitter before COVID-19 who you really liked having watch you, school teacher, Sunday school teacher. I want you to stop the video and just talk for a few minutes about the people in your life who take care of you and how that feels to be taken care of. Take a few minutes and stop and do that now. Boys and girls, God's love for us is amazing. God loves us as much as you love your pet and want to squeeze and kiss and hug them. If you don't have a pet, I bet you have a stuffed animal that you love or a special blanket that you love, that you squeeze and just feel close to. God loves us in such a special way, in a way that we can't even totally comprehend or understand. God's love for us is big and strong and unconditional, which means God loves us no matter what. And so I think, you know, the next time you're holding your pet in your arms and just loving them up, or if you have a big, big pet, you can't hold them in your arms like we do with Oliver. Maybe you're just laying down next to your dog on the, on, on the carpet and you're just putting your head up next to theirs and you're just looking them in the eye or you're scratching them between the eyes or behind their ears and you're just sharing that love with them and, and you think, wow, I really love my pet. Man, if this is what King David was thinking of, that God loves us this way, that is pretty neat. Friends, I hope you feel love for someone and something special in your life. And I hope you feel love from them. And I hope you can understand that God loves you even more than that. I invite us to pray now. I will say, lead the prayer, and I invite you to pray with me. I'm going to hold my hands like this because I have my special buddy here. He's pretty relaxed. Let us pray. Dear Jesus, we love you. Thank you for this beautiful day. Bless our pets in our lives. Bless our families and our parents. Bless our sisters and our brothers. Bless our teachers. Bless our grandparents and aunts and uncles. And all those people that love us and care for us, we thank you, Lord. Give us good rest tonight and help us to feel your love in our lives. We pray this in Jesus' name and all God's people said, Amen. Boys and girls, have a wonderful day. Be kind to one another. And this week, I want you to think about all the special people and little critters in your life, in your life that you love and think about the ones who love you. Make sure that you tell them that you love them and say, say thank you for loving you and show them ways that you want to express your love to them. Maybe it's send grandma or grandpa a text or a phone call, maybe FaceTime so you can see your face. And maybe it's doing something special for a little guy or little girl, critter, furry friend in your life. Maybe give them a little special treat or brush them out or let them know that you love them. And as you're doing that, be reminded that God loves you. Have a wonderful day. Amen.